Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and welcome to Biology Essentials video 39. This is how changes in signal transduction pathways can have huge effects. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk about poisons and diseases, but I wanted to start with one of the most dangerous animals that we have uh, on our planet. It's the California newt. Uh, California newt, you could pick it up, you could hold it, it's no big deal, but if you were to eat it, you would die just within a few hours. And that's because the California newt produces a toxin on its skin. Uh, we, we used to think the newt produced it, but we now know that it's a symbiotic bacteria that's producing this toxin. It's called tetrodotoxin. It's one of the nastiest neurotoxins that we've ever found. Um, it affects the sodium ion channels in the nerves, and so what it does is shuts them down. Our nerves can't work correctly, so those cells don't work, and then we can't breathe and we die as a result of that. Um, tetrodotoxin is found in lots of other animals, um, so pufferfish, if you're, if you're familiar with that, and in Japan, hundreds of people each die just from pufferfish uh, poisoning each year. Or uh, some of the cephalopods, like some of the really toxic uh, octopi, are also have this tetrodotoxin inside it and, and shuts them down. It also goes by another name, uh, and that's called voodoo powder or zombie powder. Uh, if you want to Google tetrodotoxin, you'll find the story of a uh, Haitian uh, zombie that was created through voodoo processes. And um, I don't really believe, no, I do. I do believe in zombies and they're coming, so watch out for that. Uh, but it's kind of an interesting story of how they took this one person, fed him some tetrodotoxin poison, and supposedly kept him as a zombie uh, for years. Interesting story. True? Who knows? Uh, so let's start with uh, signal transduction pathways. So again, if you don't know what that is, make sure you watch the video on that. Essentially what happens is a messenger will dock, a ligand will dock with a receptor. It transduces that message. It sends it to a number of secondary messages, and then it targets parts of the cell. So it has an action within the cell. So it's a great way to send a message into the cell and also amplify that message. Now signal transduction pathways can have disruptions. So, so whenever you have a series of events, you can also have a series of unfortunate events. In other words, we can have blockage along this way and that can have huge consequences. And so the two cases I'll talk about is anthrax poisoning uh, and how that affects a, um, a protein in, in a specific signal transduction pathway. And then one you're maybe a little bit more familiar with, and that is diabetes mellitus, or, or regular just diabetes. So um, let's start with anthrax poisoning. Anthrax was in the um, headlines years ago, post 9-11, and what was happening was somebody was sending anthrax spores. Anthrax spores are essentially bacteria that have dried up, they just have their genetic material inside there, and then they're just waiting. So if you breathe in anthrax, it goes into your lungs, and then uh, this bacteria starts to grow. So this is Bacillus anthracis. will start to grow. It feeds on your lungs and it produces a toxin. And that toxin can um, disrupt cells and eventually can cause uh, death as a result of that. And so how does that work? How does that affect us? Well, when I talked about the, the um, signal transduction pathways, the one that you're probably familiar with was how a ligand can bind to the G protein. That G protein can eventually um, release a alpha subunit, which then makes cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP is a secondary message. We can amplify a message, and then we can target parts within the cell. Now, what we've started to realize is that the poison found within anthrax actually targets this uh, enzyme, an uh, adenylate uh, or adenylyl cyclase. And so it changes the shape of this. So it changes the shape of this uh, protein. It now can convert ATP into cyclic AMP. And so that is the way that that anthrax poison actually works. It's just blocking a part of the signal transduction pathway. And then it has huge consequences just in the cells in which it affects. Uh, another one you're maybe more familiar with is diabetes. Uh, diabetes uses a signal transduction pathway, not diabetes, but um, there is a signal transduction pathway inside all the cells in our body. So we have an insulin receptor. An insulin receptor is going to sit on the surface of your cells. And when insulin docks with that, it has a series of events that go on within the cell. So what are some of the events? Well, it's going to affect this glucose transporter. So I like the name of that. That's just called GLUT. And GLUT is going to allow a cell to take in glucose, make use of it, store it as glycogen or make use of it inside the cell. And so if you have type 1 diabetes, what's going on there? Well, if you have type 1 diabetes, you're not producing insulin. You're not producing insulin, therefore it can't dock with that insulin receptor, 
And so that's why you have to get insulin shots. Here would be a pump working. And that's essentially producing insulin within the body so we can actually set up the signal transduction pathway. If you have type 2 diabetes, type 2 diabetes is actually affecting the insulin. You're still making insulin inside your body, but that insulin receptor is ignoring that. Um, message coming from the, in, uh, the insulin. And so that's going to disrupt the signal transduction pathway. We can't activate the glut. We can't take in the glucose as well. And so again, signal transduction pathways are awesome. It's a great way that we can transduce a message. We can amplify that message, but it's a, also a great place to target um, as far as diseases and poisons and toxins. And so uh, I hope that's helpful.